is the book of uh, Job, Job uh, 2 7. 2 7. We have it? So when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot into his crown. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you touch us from our head to our feet. And we thank you, Lord, for your healing power. And right now, be with uh, Elder Handel, Lord. Touch him. Touch his mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, visiting friends, I greet you in the name of our living God. Amen. It is a pleasure for me to share God's life-changing word with you. I could not be the beneficiary of a greater honor. My soul rejoices to see so many friends here today. Thank you for being here. I pray that God gives you a, spe a special blessing today. Let's quickly turn the pages of our Bible back to Job chapter 2, where we will read for you verses 1 through 8. Job 2, verses 1 through 8. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Thou hast thou considered my servant Job, and there and that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and eschewth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou moved me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. May the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we come to you because you have the words of life, the words of eternal life. Please speak. Your servants will listen. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of our sermon today is, God will pick you up. God will pick you up. Most people are familiar with the story of Job. A faithful man who went from trial to trial. He went through some unbearable trials, but came out as a victor. What was this social status? Job was a man of great possessions. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke and oxen, and 500 she-asses. He was the greatest of all the men of the East, reads Job 1, verse 3. Not only was he a rich man, but the Lord himself testified on his faithfulness in the following words. There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God. Job's integrity commanded so much respect that when he went out to the gate through the city, 
when he prepared his seat in the street, the young men saw him and hid themselves. And the aides arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard him, then it blessed him. And when the eye saw him, it gave witness to him. Job 29 verses 7 to 11. Job had so much fear for God that he will continually offer burnt offerings to the Lord for his children just in case they sin or curse God in their hearts when they have their parties. This same Job, a faithful servant of God, will go through a series of bad news in one day. On that particular day, reads the Bible, his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. In that day, one messenger came to him and reported that the Sibians took his oxen and asses away. Not only that, they killed the servants by the sword, and only one escaped to bring him the bad news. While this messenger was speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them all. While the second messenger was speaking, there came also another who said, The Chaldeans came and carried the camels away and slain the servants. The third one was not finished. There came a fourth messenger who reported to him that a great wind came from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the eldest brother's house, and it fell upon the young men and killed them. Frankly, I do not know if I will be able to survive such a series of bad news in just one day. But after learning all these terrible things, Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. That in itself is a powerful statement, a reminder for me that no matter what I may be going through, I may have to shed some tears, but at the end of the day, I shall keep worshiping my Lord. Amen. Job worshiped. Job lived by Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What a reaction. In verse 21 of the first chapter of the book, Job went above and beyond by saying, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, realize in chapter 2, verse 5, Satan prophesied that Job will curse God in his face if God touched his bone and flesh. And in verse 9, the enemy used Job's wife to make his prophecy become reality. Then said his wife to him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Blessed be the Lord's name. Job's reaction and instant rejection of this evil idea proved that the enemy is a liar. He, his prophecy did not come true. Something grabs my attention here. Beware, the enemy may use your own to make you go astray. He may use your wife, your husband, a brother, a sister in the church to upset you, to shake up your faith. But when this happens, know who the real enemy is. Know whom you are fighting against. The sister is not the real enemy. The brother is not the real enemy. Don't be troubled. Stay the course. Don't let anything stop you from being the worshiper that you need to be in the face of the most challenging trials. Job's situation was not a pretty one. Besides the anguish of losing everything, he had sore boils from head to toe to deal with. Down in his ashes, he picked a pot shirt, a broken piece of ceramic material to scrape himself. This terrible sight commanded complete silence when his friends came to see him. They sat down with him on the ground for seven days and seven night, nights, and none spoke a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Job 2.13 down in the ashes is not the, the best place to be. 
down in the ashes, Job was depressed. In Job chapter 3 verse 11, Job stated, Why didn't I die from the womb? Why didn't I give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Down in the ashes, Job was afraid. For my sighing comes before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Job 3, 24, 25. Down in the ashes, Job felt abandoned. My close friends detest me. Those I loved have turned against me. Job 19, verse 19. Job was also confused down in the ashes. In chapter 10, verse 15, he said, If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head? I am full of confusion. Therefore, see thou my affliction. Job was confused because he knew he did not deserve any of it. And worse, his friends were making all sorts of accusations against him condemning him while he knew in his heart he remained faithful though in the ashes. Eliphaz opened his mouth and started insinuating that Job is paying for his unfaithfulness. Whoever perished being innocent, he asked, or where were, the, where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. He said in Job 4, verses 7 and 8, Bildad, in chapter 8, verse 6, unkindly declared, If you are pure and upright, surely God will awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Zephor, in Job 11, verses 3 to 5, added insult to injury by saying, Should your lies make men hold their peace? And when you mock, shall no man make you ashamed? For you have said, my doctrine is pure, and I am clean in your eyes. But hold oh, that God will speak and open his lips against you. Job finally got fed up with them and replied, But you are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value. Oh, that you will, you will hold your peace altogether, and it shall be your wisdom. Job 13, 4, 5. In other words, Job was saying, bunch of bad doctors, you misdiagnose the situation, and worse, you are kicking a helpless man lying on his bed of death. Be quiet so you may be appear to be wise. These so-called friends failed in their mission. They were kicking Job again and again with their condemning words. While he was down in his ashes, to the point where Job said, I have heard so much, so I have heard many such things, miserable comforters, are you all? Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldens you that you answer? Brothers and sisters, do not place your trust in friends. They will fail you. They will fail you big time. And that when you least expect it to happen. But I got good news for you today. You can trust the man of Calvary. He will never fail you. He died for you. What else will then he do for you? At some point in this whole ordeal, Job did something that all Christians ought to do when we are faced with our own trials. Job looked beyond what his eyes could see. And by doing just that, he found this precious hope revealed in the following words. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroyed his body, yet my flesh will see God. Amen. Job 19 verses 25-26. In Job chapter 27 verses 2, 3, and 4. We see nothing but sheer conviction, pure determination of a man to serve God no matter what until the end. Job continues his parable and said, As God lives, who has taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who has vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, and my tongue utter deceit. There again, 
in chapter 27, the prophecy the enemy spoke in chapter 5, saying that Job will curse God to his face and die, was proven wrong. Job's faithfulness spoke volume. He told the enemy in his face that he is a liar and the father of lies. Even in the worst situation, your reaction, the words coming out of your mouth, must be a beautiful sermon for the Lord. Even though Job faced fear, depression, confusion as the human being that he was, he held on to the hope that one day his faithful God will pick him up from the ashes. The same will be true for you. God will pick you up from your terrible situation that you are facing. You may not know where to go. You may not know which type of prayer to say anymore. You may open your mouth to pray and it's streams of tears that run down your cheeks. You may be saying in your heart, God must have forgotten about me. He must love so and so more than me. Look how well things are working for her. Look how successful he is. What about me, Lord? It seems like I cannot get anywhere. It seems like anything I touch is cursed. Friends may start doubting the God you serve, but I am here to tell you, my God has the power to pick you up from whatever situation that you are in. He will pick you up from the ashes. That's what he does best. You may be depressed like Job and out of love. Some friends may be inviting you to some unclean activities and pleasures to find some sort of relief because they do not know any better. You may be thinking, why not? I need a break from this unjust God. I owe it to myself. Just like Job understood it, it's not the hour to give up. It's not the time to go back. It's not the time to curse God. The darker it gets, the closer you are getting to the break of day. Away from God's presence is not the place you want to be. But closer to the cross is where you want to be. Anytime you feel discouraged in your walk with the Lord, may this song become yours. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer to you, Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. GPS does not take you there. American Airlines does not take you there. Only the Holy Spirit takes you there and keeps you there. And there you have the blessed privilege of being sprinkled by the precious blood of the Lamb, which will breathe life, hope, conviction, joy, and a renewed spirit into you. God will pick you up from any situation you deem terrible that you are in, whether it is medical, financial, or spiritual. I remember when I was a young boy, my beloved mother took my siblings and myself to a town called Tomasic in Haiti, so we could spend our summer vacation with my father, who was stationed there in this area of the country as a military officer. After spending a few days, I became very sick. The more the days were passing by, the worse my situation was getting. I suffered from typhoid and malaria. When my mother realized that she was about to lose her boy, she jumped on the back of a Land Rover pickup with me. She made a makeshift bed for me to lay in, in the back of that pickup. Being exposed to the burning sun, I felt terribly hot. There was no fancy ambulance there. As we were on the way, on our way back to our hometown, rushing to make it on time to the hospital, my mother would gently lift up my head from time to time to give me some water to keep me hydrated. And I felt as if life was leaving my body. It was not a comfortable ride. It was a very bumpy one on that long dirt road that took us back to our hometown. Praised be the Lord, we finally made it to the hospital. A doctor rushed to my side and attended to me. In this period when I became very sick, with typhoid and malaria, many children were being killed or left with a handicap from these same diseases. I became so sick that I had to learn how to walk again at about age five. When I was down in my sickness, the Lord reached down and picked me up. He did it for me. He can do it for you as well. You just have to believe. 
I also remember at one point I was a young man with a wife and two children, but with no place that I could call my own. I went from job interview to job interview. Nothing worked for me. My wife and I did not have much, but we had faith. And faith guided us to the one who has the answers to all challenges. Faith led me. Faith led me to Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Though I was not working, the Lord provided. Somehow we always had the money to make the monthly payment on the one car that we had at, one, at that time. We always had food on our table to eat every day. Our children did not go naked. God sent some angels in the flesh on our way. And when the time came for him to bless me with a job, he did it mightily and powerfully in a way that I was not expecting. He gave me something way better than the one that I had before. Before they could ask, where is the God that he serves? He picked me up and set me on higher ground. I surely remember about a year ago, I used to struggle time and time again with a particular sin in my life. Whenever I had two or three consecutive months of victory, I will soon fall right back into the prison of that sin again. At times I made prayers to the Lord with teary eyes because I knew whom I have decided to follow. And I knew deep inside that, she, that he shed his blood for me. He died for me. And as a result of this precious sacrifice, he deserved better from me. He deserved my whole heart and a life of purity. So I cried and I prayed. I prayed and I cried. And one day something happened. He touched me. And I felt something I never felt before. He touched me and he made me whole. A kind of touch that I will be willing to offer millions of dollars to receive. But freely and through prayer, through the precious blood of the Lamb, I received it. Freely, my friend. I received my victory. I can now say I am a free man. Not by might. Not by my might, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. This sin does not have any hold of me anymore. And I shout hallelujah. Amen. This touch has given me the assurance whenever Jesus returns, I will be ready and I will surely be among those who will meet him in mid-air to go live in heaven. He did it for me, my friends. He can do it for you as well. If you have a sin that you are struggling with, do not give in to the idea that it's over, that you will not overcome. Yes, with Christ you will be more than conquerors. Make prayer your food, songs of praise your desert, the word of God your passion, and your victory is right around the corner. Get ready to rejoice before the Lord. Your victory will come. You will no longer have doubts about your salvation. On the contrary, your heart will seek after the Lord's return. You will know perfect joy. There is no greater joy than the joy of knowing that you are forgiven and sin has no power over you. God is here right now to touch you and make it happen for you as well. There are things that happen in your life. Only God, only the true God could make them happen. And these things that God did for you automatically turn you into a worshiper that you never were before. A different kind of worshiper. For you have a story to tell. Because you have come to know a God you can rely on. He is ready to make his strength perfect in your weakness today. My God is wonderful. Faithfulness is his name. It may take a long time, but he will speak for you. When he speaks, people will know that it is the Almighty who has spoken on your behalf. He will not stay silent forever. He finally spoke for Job, for he not only is a deliverer, a redeemer, but a fair judge as well. Job 42, verses 7 and 8. And it was so after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee. 
and against thy two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him I will accept, lest I deal with you after your folly. In that you have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. What a turn of events. Now Job the despised. Now Job the court and court sinner. Job the abandoned. Job the depressed. Job the confused is appointed by God to pray for his friend Elphaz to find forgiveness. He picked him up right before his friends from the ashes. People may misunderstand you or may not want to value you until God speaks but keep on walking on the path of righteousness. Your reward will not come from men. It will come from God. Amen. Beloved, beloved, realize that Job's deliverance came when he prayed for his friends who have wronged him with their many terrible accusations. Job 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Brothers and sisters, if it seems like you are held captives and that your deliverance is taking forever to come, seek deep into your hearts and see if you have someone who has been cursing you that you may need to bless. If there are people who have been mistreated, who have been mistreating you, that you may need to pray for. Do these things and wait upon the Lord for your blessings. In the 11th verse of chapter 42, the Lord restored Job. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him and in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. Such a beautiful sight. Such a beautiful gathering. But where was everybody when he felt lonely and depressed? Except for his friends who came to visit but set up their own court, sat as judges, put him on trial, condemned him, and made him feel worse? Where was everybody? Job lamented, They, they that dwell in my house, and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant. He gave me no answer. Though I beg him with my own mouth, my breath is repulsive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even young children despise me. I appear, they ridicule me. Job 19 verses 15 to 18. Where was everybody? But hallelujah, there is a God for the forsaken. Job 42 verse 12 tells us, The Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. He had double of all the possessions he previously had. God even replaced the seven sons and the three daughters who died. Blessed be the Lord. And as I sing on the cake, God blessed Job with long life. He lived 140 years after he came out of his trials to see his sons, his sons' sons, even four generations. Job was indeed blessed by God. My friends, when you are blessed, keep your eyes on the one who blesses, not the blessings, because when the blessings are no more, friends will leave you, but the one who blesses will never forsake you. Jesus, the faithful friend, will always be by your side. Job was restored because he stayed faithful and passed the test. Brothers and sisters, stay faithful in your trials. More than 14,000 sheep, 600 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 she ashes, asses, you will have something far greater, far better. It's called eternal life, and this you can believe in. For he is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Numbers 23 verse 19. 
He said, I go prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. John 14, verse 3. I believe this promise. You know why? Because he said, because he said he will come. And he came just like he said. As a baby boy in the flesh to put the sinner's hand back in God's hand. Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. It happened just the way he said. So I trust him to return just like he said he will as a conquering king in his glory. Yes, it is good to know that, the, that God will pick you up from your bad medical, financial, and spiritual conditions. But knowing that he will pick you up for the heavenly banquet brings greater joy. Jesus will pick you up soon and very soon. People, understandably so, get excited whenever they are promised to be taken to places or activities that they love. If an uncle calls a young nephew who loves soccer and says, I know you like the Brazilian team. They will be in town tomorrow playing against the USA. I bought a ticket for you and I will pick you up after work at 5 p.m. so we can go watch the game. I am sure this young boy may lose sleep over this game not being able to wait to go to the stadium to watch his favorite team. If a young man calls her fiance, whom he has not seen for days and say and says sweetheart i know you are off tomorrow and i will be working half a day so i decided to book a table at this prestigious restaurant so we can go have dinner together i will pick you up around 4 p.m. i imagine that this young lady will have a hard time sleeping because all she will be thinking of is the type of attire she will pick the colors she will wear the way she's going to fix her hair, the high heels she will wear, the perfume that his fiance likes the most. She will make sure that she wears her best smile. She may even be smiling in her sleep when she finally falls asleep. Comes tomorrow, I know this young boy will be staring at the clock, hoping that his stare will make the hour hand on the clock go faster. The young lady on her side who think that she will never have enough time to make herself pretty enough for her fiancé. She will even wish that the tick-tock sounds on the clock had bigger intervals between them. But you know, as much as the uncle could want to be there at the stadium to watch the soccer game with the nephew, he may call 30 minutes before the game starts to say, nephew, I am sorry. I got into a car accident, and I am in the middle of a police report. I do not think we will make it on time to the game. We have to cancel. The fiancé may also call her sweetheart and say, Sweetie, my mother gets sick again. I have to rush home and get her to the hospital. I am sorry. We have to cancel our date. Such things happen because we are humans limited by space and time, and unplanned events that catch us by surprise. But great is my joy to tell you today, the one who said he will pick you up is the great I am. He will surely pick you up because he has control over time and space. He is the beginning and the end. When the trumpet sounds for him to come with the army of his angels, no storm, no hurricane, no thunder, no volcano will be able to hold him back. Be excited about your God coming to pick you up. I get so excited about his return that I cannot help but share this great hope with others. I live to see this day. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. I shall see the king where the angels sing. I shall see the king someday in the better land on the golden strand. And with him shall ever stay in his glory. I shall see the king and forever endless praises sing. It was on Calvary Jesus died for me. I shall see the king someday. So good to know he will pick me up. Just like this boy will appropriately wear a soccer jersey to go to the stadium. Just like the young lady will wear a dress worthy of a date with her fiancé 
We Christians have wore the robe of righteousness provided by the sacrifice of the cross while we are waiting for the return of our Lord Jesus. As vigilant Christians, we will be sure to stay away from the mud of lust, the spill of pride, the grease of greed, the moth of prejudice, so we may be ready as ready as possible with the help of the Holy Spirit. When I was down in my sickness, when I was struggling with my financial challenges, when I was in the ashes spiritually, God stepped down and picked me up. I am with you always, even until the end of the world. That was my reason not to give up. Beloved, my prayer for you this afternoon is that in the midst of your trials, you continue to lift up your eyes onto the hills from where your help will come from. And that our Lord Jesus will continue to be in your life a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a way maker. He will pick you up. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice because he will pick you up. May God bless you. Now I invite you to stand up and sing our closing hymn, number 426, I Shall See the King.